G'day and welcome to the first episode of my video blog. My name is Alex Hendrickson and I'm a songwriter. I really love songwriting and I wanted to just share a bunch of tips, tricks and techniques with you guys. Um, anyone who's interested in listening. Um, all right. I'm going to probably have maybe six episodes, I reckon. Um I'm just going to kind of go through my techniques one after the other. I'm going to start with the first one right off the bat, which is beat foundations. Um, I'm making up these names. They are in kind of no way taken from somewhere else. They're just taken from how I've sort of done things. Um, again, it's just my way of doing things. Um, it's not, you know, necessarily right for everyone but it's definitely helped me along the way. And um, I just wanted to be able to share a bunch of this stuff with anyone who was willing to listen. All right, so Beat Foundations, this is kind of um, where it all sort of started and kind of pulling together techniques, I suppose, for me, uh, rather than just kind of going in blindly into writing a song um, with n no sort of ideas on how to get things started. Um, all right, so beat foundations consist of a bunch of stuff. Tempo is the big one. At the beginning, when I open up a session, I use logic. Um, I'm going to define a tempo straight off the bat. And, you know, if I'm coming in with zero, this is like really starting with zero. It's not starting with any idea of anything. This is really absolutely no idea how you're starting and this is kind of how I would start something where there is nothing at the very beginning so I would just start with a tempo and if I was keen on doing something fast it's going to be a fast tempo keen on doing something slow I'll do a slow tempo down the line I've got some advice um one that I like to use just a simple one is like R&B music is kind of the sound of the heartbeat which is like uh 80 bpm um which so it's cool if you want to write like an R&B song, you can kind of just jump straight into 80 BPM. If you want to do a kind of crazy dance track, obviously something way further up the scale. Okay, so a bunch of stuff is groove. Um, groove is kind of how you dance with the beat. Um, a basic structure is kind of what I'll sort of think about as well. So what I'll generally start with, depending on who I'm writing with, I have kind of three techniques uh one is real drums so if we have someone who's a real you know actual drummer um keen to hit some drums or something and can play in time um i'll kind of just start with getting them playing a bunch of beats find something find a four bar 16 bar whatever it is and grab a couple of loops and kind of start from there another one is beat pads um hitting pads that are connected to midi and just grabbing, again, something that is pretty basic, um, pretty simple, something that's fun, that is, you know, that I'm feeling. Uh, the other one is samples. So I'll use samples that I believe are downloaded from Loop Loft. Um, and again, these are just loops that kind of tempo map on Logic and they're really awesome. Um, they sound really clean, uh, which is cool for some things I guess I like to kind of make them sound weird and wild and wonderful um, and again sometimes we will just use them to demo a track um, it's a bit more inspiring than a click so the few things I have if I'm looking down it's just I've got a couple of notes I'm going to read out um, connecting sections and parts so again once you kind of have your basic kind of beat of the day as I would call it um, that might be like a you know the drum beat the drum loop or the beat pad and you might just have kind of two variations which again would just kind of lead itself to be like a verse and a chorus um, just to start with uh, so then once you kind of have the verse and the chorus um, beats you might want to sort of work on connecting those that might not be important right away until you have the chords uh, or it might be something you want to do right away um, in kind of getting an overlay of a kind of a basic arrangement. Um, 
which again, I generally start with just verse and a chorus, two sort of parts of a song that are going to be in almost every song, depending on what you're writing, but generally you're going to have a verse and a chorus, I'm assuming. Um, I like to start also with overfilling. So I will fill up the entire session with the verse or the verse and the chorus. And bef then I will kind of start adding in some chords and that might be with guitar or with keyboards or whatever that might be. Um, I'll go into that in an another session talking about making chords and things like that. But generally it's just a couple of chords um, to start with. It's all up to your ability. Um, it doesn't have to be anything too technical. A lot of songs that I write are just two chords, sometimes three, sometimes a lot. Um, so I'll start with overfilling the entire thing with lots and lots of um, material for the beats. And then I will subtract later on down the track or as I'm working through those sections. Um, a cool little techniques in that is kind of half timing sections and double timing sections. Again, this will kind of come once you've sort of got the basic outline of the song. Half timing and double timing sections, uh, I find are really defined with melodies and lyrics, uh, which again, I'll kind of go into in another session. This is just kind of talking about getting a song off the ground with a beat. Um, and another one would be like polyrhythm sort of stuff that might be in the kick drum. Uh, snare might be, I don't know, where you kind of bring in polyrhythms. Polyrhythms are really fun, really interesting ways of, you know, doing through rhythms as well. Um, uh, I found, though, like one thing that I notice with writing acoustic music, so like an acoustic guitar, using that as the basis to your song um, or like a bass instrument or something, not a bass guitar but the foundational instrument uh, I find the acoustic is really rhythmic and it can be really hard to put a cool beat that makes sense to an acoustic part of a song where a lot of acoustic songs either have like a simple beat or no beat at all um, I really like putting a beat in and then kind of writing with the acoustic guitar or something uh, I've just found having the beat there first has really helped make sense of a song. And I found it really hard if I would sit on a guitar writing a bunch of stuff to then kind of place beats and place things to it. I'm not 100% as to why that's the case. I just know that it was harder for me to do that. And now I've found it easier just kind of having a cool beat that really is just kind of fun. And then um, finding my chords and other things uh, on top of that. Um, a cool example of this would be uh, when I wrote Sue the Lady Wine with Matt Corby. Uh, this is like that technique to a T, which is just getting a tempo. This was early on in the, it's kind of like the, using these techniques, I suppose, in um, real songwriting. And I picked a really weird tempo. It was almost like silly of us to do that because it was... Um, I forget exactly what it was, but it was uh, a tempo, not just 120 BPM. It was like 120 point something, which kind of made it harder, I think, down the line. So it's probably easier just picking a more of a rounded number without any decimal places. Um, but that song was just kind of groove. So we had a bunch of grooves. He played a bunch on the drums and then we came back and added in the guitars, which are some looped chords and then we started to bring in structures and stuff like that. And I will go into more depth about sort of structuring songs. Structuring songs is really um, almost like at the at the end of, of all these, one of the last things I'll talk about will be structuring because it's, it's one of the last things that I've even started to tackle as a songwriter is structuring songs and arranging songs. I suppose structuring and arranging can be, you know, something that's done together for some people, but... For me, I found that it's kind of been a little bit easier to do that at the end once I know what all the moving parts are uh, to start to bring in structure and arrangement into the song. Um, all right, so I am kind of talking about, you know, philosophies as to why 
these things are the way they are. And I think the main thing that I've jumped onto with the idea of the uh, tempo or the beat being one of the very first things is um, it's something that is such a constant in the song. You can change chords and you can um, change groove, I suppose. Uh, but their tempo, unless you kind of want to do a song that does change tempo and time signatures and stuff like that, if you're really clever, it's kind of going to be the one thing that sticks the whole way through and you'll find in certain genres that there is kind of certain tempos that will just be that tempo. You know, dance music is going to be fast and R&B is going to be slow, um, generally. Um, so those are kind of just like a little trick where I'm just like, bam, let's just get the tempo, get it out of the way, and then we'll start working on all the other fun stuff, uh, the really, really creative stuff, and we can kind of just put that to the side. And it's really way more inspiring to work to a groove or a drum beat or something and kind of figure out all that beautiful space between, um, which is again, something that is a easy thing to say and a very kind of hard thing to master, um, learning what is the space between and how you treat it and how you approach notes and how you can be late and early and, uh, dance around that, that beat and that tempo. Um, all right. I think, that's kind of all for this very first episode. I hope you kind of got a little bit of something out of that. Again, this is just my sort of techniques and tricks and tips, things that I've learned along the way that I'm just keen to share with people to break out of writer's block or just get inspired. Um, subscribe if you want to hear more. Um, I'll release uh, a bunch of these episodes. I'm going to talk about my... Uh, lyric writing, mumble melodies, um, structuring and arrangements. Uh, I'm going to talk about like kind of how I use production as a part of songwriting. It's not just kind of a, a producing thing. It's a really fun and inspiring way to, you know, get excited about a track whilst you're making it. Um, awesome. Thanks so much for listening. Um, my name is Alex Hendrickson. And this is um, the beginnings of the philosophies of songwriting. <laughs>